Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be taking a look at Iconica Sketch, which is an included orchestral soundware which comes with Cubase 13. This is a cut down version of the full Iconica library, but it gives you access to quite a few nice features and is heading towards professional library territory as hopefully we'll see towards the end of the video. It's loaded in Halley and Sonic. Now, for those of you who are confused, Halley and Sonic is now the free version of, of Halley and Sonic. Halley and Sonic used to be a paid product and had Halley and Sonic SE, which everybody got with Cubase. Now, Halley and Sonic is the free one and the, the paid one kind of doesn't exist. So that's needlessly confusing because of just the constant reuse of names. Anyway... Open up Halley and Sonic, and then once you've downloaded Iconica Sketch using the download assistant, and then you've installed it with the library manager, if you've got any issues with that, there's other videos on the channel, then you can load it up here, and then we see the list of orchestral instruments that are available. So first things first, looking through this list, we can see it covers pretty much the entire orchestra. It doesn't cover every niche. And it doesn't have the solo instruments you might be longing for. So it doesn't, for instance, have a solo violin. Uh, it has section violins and section violas, etc. So it's not going to replace the multi-hundred pound Spitfire libraries, which you might want for solo violin, etc. But it's definitely a good starting point as far as I'm concerned. So let's just take a look at a typical instrument. So we'll start off with the bass clarinet. So here we have the bass clarinet, which is typical of the user interface. So I'll just take you through what's available here. So as you can see on screen, we've got the instrument itself, and then we've got some key switches, different ways of the sound being made by the instrument. In this case, it defaults to staccato. So if you just play the keyboard, even if I hold the note down, it's staccato. Now we have access to other articulations. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can either click on screen. So for instance, if I click here, we get Marcato. Or you can use a MIDI controller to send these notes. So if I transpose my little keyboard down, here you can see I'm changing C0, C sharp zero, D zero, and then E zero. So I get those different articulations so if you've got a large keyboard, you can change your articulation with your left hand while you're playing with your right hand, etc. So this makes it quite performance oriented. Or of course, you can record the MIDI data or create the MIDI data to change those articulations in the middle of a piece. Now, what isn't apparent without auditioning the sounds is that these two articulations in this case are velocity sensitive. So if I play harder on the keyboard, So if I play really gently on the keyboard, and if I play harder, we get a louder note, I'll go up an octave. And that's the same for staccato as well. But on sustain, it doesn't matter how hard I hit the keyboard. So my poor little Akai is gonna get hammering here, and you may be able to hear in the background, I'm gonna absolutely hammer this keyboard, and it will get no, no louder than PPP. And that's because these sounds are driven with a modulation wheel. So that's normally on the left-hand side of your keyboard. In the case of the MPK, it's a tiny little joystick, which makes it a little bit difficult to do. But if I play a note now and then use the mod wheel, I can control that sound dynamically. And the same is true for legato as well. The only difference between the two is sustain allows me to play chords. Whereas in the case of legato, if I do play a chord, I get whichever note I played last is the one that has actually heard. The reason for this is simple because if you are playing long sustained 
parts like this, the only time you get to control the volume, if it's controlled by velocity, is when you initially hit the note. So having a controller do it means you can do things dynamically. Which you just wouldn't be able to do if you were trying to do it with velocity, because there's no way to transmit that information. Yeah, you could do it with a keyboard with aftertouch, but they're less common. So modulation has become pretty much the standard for that kind of thing, and a lot of libraries use that or something very similar. Now at the bottom we've got three controls, which is generally true for most of these. So we've got level, and these change per articulation. So you can see there the sustain level is up, and the marcato level is down. So it remembers that per articulation. The same is true also for attack. So if we look, if we got a very short attack, that'll do it on marcato because we're more likely to hear it or a longer one. So you can hear that's just fading in a little bit. And then we've got the release control as well. Similar thing. If I turn that down, you can hear that's, that's ending very, very quickly once I've released the key. We also get the ability to have a true release, which is controlled here. So it's legato and release or legato or off. Uh, in my experimentation, I found that legato and release gives me the most convincing uh, kind of releases on these notes. But again, it's nice to be able to experiment with that kind of thing and play around with it. So with that user interface out of the way, let's go and have a listen to a few of the sounds, although not all of them because we'd be here all day. So here we are on cellos, and as you may have noticed, there are more articulations. So the number of articulations vary depending on the sound. So in this case, we've got those same four, which we had on the bass clarinet, but we're also adding in a few others. So spiccato, tremolo, sustained vibrato, things which are appropriate for each one. Now we don't get a huge range. So some libraries will have maybe 16 different articulations, which allow you much more control, but this is uh, reasonable and certainly much more than many libraries and synths from back in the day would give you. So let's just have a quick listen to these. So we've got staccato, pizzicato, spiccato, and then the modulation control ones such as sustain, legato, tremolo, which anybody who's seen the second series of Blackadder 2 will be expecting something particular there. And then finally, sustained vibrato. So again, a nice range of different articulations available there. It's not as full as a full professional library, but then this is something which has been included with the Cubase. So I think this is a good step up in many ways for many people. So glockenspiel, as you'd imagine. So there is a stop key which allows you to damp the note at the end. So if I hit a note without pressing it, you can hopefully hear that rings on for quite a while. But if I hit it and then hit the stop key, as I just did, you may have seen on screen, it kills that off quickly. So again, another good way to mimic real playing dynamics and techniques. So I won't want to kill anyone with my terrible keyboard playing, but again, the harp, nicely implemented, sounds good to me. Again, it may not be as deep and as rich as some libraries I've heard, but again, it's not the end of the world because this is, after all, this included library. Plenty of sustain there, and there is also... As with the glockenspiel, we've got a stop key to allow you to damp those notes at the end if you need to do so. 
Percussion map. So this is one area where many orchestral GM libraries fell down, certainly where they, they just didn't have all the percussion that you would need and it was difficult to get things like rolls sounding good. So percussion map gives you access to quite a few of these. Now, if you're not sure what's what, if you click the I, you will see the percussion map, which goes from A0 all the way up to G6, C6, sorry. So you can see there's quite a lot to that. And they, they perform pretty much as you would expect. So a great variety of sound in there. And if we go for one where we've got a roll and a hit, We can use the level control if we need to, to bring the level of the roll up. So now the roll is relatively loud compared to the hit. So that's, again, useful to be able to bring that up because I think some of the rolls get a little bit lost. And while I understand they You often don't want that FFF kind of sound. You want a loud but subtle roll rather than rather than that sort of thing. So again, useful to have those controls. We've got vibraphone, we've got tubular bells, etc. They all sound pretty good. Uh, the violins is one area where possibly I think this is one of those areas where you're being held back from something which maybe is included in the full version, uh, a solo violin, etc. But convincing versions of solo instruments are really, really difficult to implement. They're very technically difficult to, to get right, etc. So I'm not surprised it's not here. But these violins, again, particularly in sustain mode, if you had a better controller to control it. And you know, there's, there's some nice sounds to be had in there. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with this for an included library. I was, I was nicely surprised to see that there's articulations and a reasonable range of them, but also that they're implemented in a sensible way, which means you can translate what you've done in other libraries to this and vice versa. I very much see this as kind of a starter library This, you know, going to get you addicted on all the expensive things you can spend all of your money on and get some amazing results. I think it's very easy from our perspective to forget just how much progress has been made in this regard. Again, I know I sound like an old git going on, but when I started out, my only sound source was a Yamaha TG100 little multi timbral GM sound generator. I'll try and find a picture and put it on screen. Uh, and the the synth strings, etc. And that was the kind of thing I was into at the time. I really wanted to make sort of beats and orchestral music. Uh, yeah, never really got around to doing that convincingly, but it, it was really limited. And while some of the strings sound sounded okay, most of them, you could tell it was a synthesizer, you know, no problem. Whereas I think 90% of people with things like this will not know that this is not a full orchestra. I'm sure the orchestral music creation people go, no, 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 they will do. But my experience is most of the time they won't. And if you put one real instrument in there, if you put a, a lead violin in there and have everything else be synthetic, often people won't know. And, and maybe they don't care, I don't know. Maybe we're all just wasting our time. But that's by the by. Hopefully you found this quick tour of the Iconica Sketch Library informative and maybe discovered something about its use. I'm going to finish this video on two things. So what I'm going to do is play the demo song which comes with this, which is just played straight in Cubase. So I'm going to play that interspersed with the same piece of music played on Halion Sonic but in GM mode. So I basically just stripped out all of the performance information and then used the general MIDI sounds so you get an idea of how we used to live effectively and then you can make up your own mind as to which <laughs> as to which you prefer. You might prefer the GM one. Who knows? 
Anyway, as ever, I hope you found this video useful and we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition. And to play out, here's the uh, demo song of Iconica Sketch. <laughs>